Good afternoon. Welcome back to the 2021 PGA Championship here at the Ocean Course, Key Island, South Carolina. We are pleased to be joined by Jason Duffner. Jason opened with a one under 71 today uh, here. And uh, maybe, Jason, if you could talk about the golf course and uh, what was a, well, uh, a round well played for you today. Uh, yeah, I'm, I like this golf course. I like these conditions, firm and fast, um, generally speaking, is my cup of tea. I feel like this kind of is a little bit out of the norm for a PGA Championship venue. It's closer to maybe like an Open Championship or maybe a U.S. Open. Um, I think hitting fairways, hitting a lot of greens is going to go a long way this year. And putting yourself in position to make a par, um, make a lot of pars, and occasionally get a birdie. Uh, I don't think there's lots of opportunities, at least for myself, to chase a lot of birdies. I think you kind of just got to let the birdies kind of sort its way out. Maybe hit a close shot. Uh, maybe you got a perfect number, maybe roll in a 30 foot or something like that. So I'm comfortable doing that. Um, so I'm looking forward to the next couple of days and then obviously get off to a pretty good start here. The first day always gets the ball rolling a little bit better. All right, let's hit the floor for some questions for Jason. Yeah, Doug on seven. Sorry please. about that. Um, they like this better to start on. I mean, Ricky kind of brought up the idea of nice to start on 10 to at least have the wind at your back at the start. You're going to get them both ways anyway. But do you have any, any theories on? I don't have much preference on that. you got to play all 18. So, um, And we know I've been here since Friday. So I've been dealing with this east wind um, since I've been here. I think the east wind is probably a little bit easier than what we might see possibly Saturday or Sunday because you get that stretch. Once you, you get through four, one, two, three are pretty pretty reasonable holes for this golf course, I would say. Um, and, and four is a, a tough one. But once you hit that stretch where you get five and then you get all the way to 13 where you're dealing with downwind, I think that's a lot uh, more manageable. If that wind switches around again, now you're looking at five all the way into 13 into the wind for a long stretch. So you get only short pockets of into the wind. So you start one, two, three, four into the wind. Then you make it on the back side, you get 14 through 18 into the wind. But I thought they were pretty fair and reasonable with tees and hole locations today, especially on the back nine there to finish up where we weren't hitting too many myself, fairway woods into par threes and or par fours. What, what iron did you hit on five on the par three? Uh, I hit a five iron today. I think the hole was about 218 to the hole, roughly 205 to cover that trap. Pretty. That's kind of one of the ones where I was talking about where I had a perfect number for a five iron, a little bit of help, and I was able to pull it off in there inside of five feet. So. Four feet eight. Let's go to Luke on three. Hey, Duff. Um, hey. Just curious, do you have a, a favorite golf hole out there, one that's, you know, most fun? Man, there's a lot of good holes. Um, let me think for a minute. I think three is an amazing shortest medium length par, th par four. Um, I've heard possibly we might move up to where it's drivable, which I don't think – is really drivable when you look at that green. But I think there's a lot of risk on that hole for, for a pretty wide fairway and a big green, but um, you can make a mess. I think that's a great design. Uh, let me think for a minute here. Uh, I think the par fives are really good. I think all of the par fives are really good. They're all a little different um, and, and require a little bit different. I think that's one thing that Pete Todd did really well is he made you, most of the golf course I've played that he's designed make you play through the bag. So I think I've used almost every club in my bag today. Um, so that tests you. You want to make sure that everything's good. Um, and around the greens is obviously challenging too. A lot of, a lot of different situations we don't see normally out on tour, uh, pitching and chipping, and that's why I was here this weekend working on that. Yeah, th that green on three looks especially sort of Yeah, you just, the, you, you kind of dis discredit where the pin is and just go for the middle. That's kind of my strategy. And if you can make a 20 footer or so, then great. But you're probably going to walk away with four there if you use that strategy. Babs on 12. Jason, what have you been working on in your game or waiting to see that maybe you saw today? Um, yeah, you know, I've been uh, went back and saw Chuck Cook right before Hilton Head. I'd worked for him with him for a long period of time kind of went away from him for a little bit um, and, and struggled. So kind of kicking myself a little bit for that. But since then, I've been hitting it a lot better. Um, I talked to Doug. I guess that was what, Charlotte, we talked a little bit. You know, for me, it, it's hard. Um, the distance thing is real for me. Uh, I've never been a, a long hitter. Uh, and I've never been the best of putters. So you put those two, two together and you shoot a lot of scores around even par, which 
doesn't really work much out here. Um, and for me to be good, I need to have club face control, which I had lost a little bit. I started hitting shots with a lot of misdirection. Uh, and for me, uh, getting the club face quiet at impact, having a square club face, being stable at impact really gives me a lot of confidence that I can hit the shots I need and keep it in the fairway and hit the greens. And if I get a hot day with a putter, then I can score and compete at a reasonable level. So with Chuck, do you try to get back to old fields, or is it almost like Yeah, a lot slate? of it was old fields. Um, for me, I had just gotten too shallow. You know, I had always played a little bit, a little bit steep uh, or on the plane, and I had gotten the other way, and that was really unfamiliar with me. And, and when you get under the plane, the face is hard to stabilize, and I like to lean the shaft. So if you get under, then you lean the shaft, that's a lot of right bias, and then you got to use your hands a lot, which I'm too old to do that now. My hand-eye coordination isn't as good as it used to be. Let's go Fiverr. Five. Jason, how, how tough is it to get any momentum or consistency going out there with, with a difficult course and, and the wind changing in complete direction depending on what? Yeah. You, um, you know, I think momentum on this golf course doesn't necessarily mean birdies. I think if you can string seven, eight, nine pars or in a round, you can feel pretty good. There's a lot of holes where I'm playing for par, um, you know, and, and trying my best to just get in the fairway, get on the green, and get out of there, like I said. So I don't think you're going to see a lot of guys run off with a ton of birdies. They may surprise me. Guys do that often out here. Um, but I think we're going to be in that some four under to eight under for the week, maybe approaching 10 if, if the wind lays down. But I don't think there's going to be a lot. Of, last time we were here, the, the wind wasn't all that uh, brutal except for Friday and obviously Rory ran away with it but second place was five under so um, you might have somebody separate like that but I'm just looking to shoot even one under two under every day and see where I'm at on Sunday when we hit the back nine. Let's go to Alex on nine. Yeah uh, Jason yeah yeah Rory uh, over the last couple of months talked about the fact that he was starting to chase link because of Bryson what was the reason you left Chuck Cook? Was it anything to do with ch trying to chase some length? <laughs> no, there's no chasing length here. <laughs> I think, um, you know, I'm 44 years old. The only way I'm going to chase length is if I get in the gym and, and do some things to move faster, um, which I have done since September. I've seen some gains in that, but not near what some of these guys are doing. Um, I left Chuck for a, a numerous reasons, some of it being just logistics. Um, I went to a guy that worked under Chuck for a long time, and I thought I would be okay, and it, it just didn't work out. So um, it had nothing to do with length. I'm not chasing length. I think chasing length, swing, uh, changing your swing is a is a dangerous proposition, to be honest with you, because you start chasing it with your driver. Eventually, it feeds into your irons, and now all of a sudden, a lot of things have changed. Uh, I'm 44 years old. I'm just trying to enjoy these last however many years I'm playing golf out here on the tour and, and do the best that I can. We're going to wrap it up with number seven, Doug. When you when you are trying to get back to where you were, how much video do you use? Uh, a little feel? bit, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's two-dimensional, so you can't really see everything you need to see. Um, so <laughs> I use a lot of other things. I use a lot of the 3D technology. I use TrackMan occasionally if I can trust the numbers. Um, probably shouldn't have said that, but <laughs> um, so there's a lot of different things that I use to try and calibrate myself, um, and some of them are unique to me and what I feel. Teaching feels is a hard thing, I think, for teachers. You know, what something might feel a certain way to one guy might feel different to another guy. So I have a couple keys that I've really locked in on over the last five or six weeks, and I'm sticking with those. Um, and we'll use, you know, on off weeks, I try to stay away from all that technology when I'm at a tournament and just compete and play. You don't and go use, back. And use the fields that I You don't have. go back and, and look at the stats and see what your longest drive was today, do you? Probably not, but if I had to guess, it'd be 13. I busted that thing. Let me look. <laughs> what, uh, 350. Two. 352. Was that already? I don't know. <laughs> hang on, hang on. 352. Sorry, bud. Real-time Real scoring here. On 13? Yeah. Oh, no, 12, I meant. Oh. I get the holes confused. 363. Woo! <laughs> Bryson, watch out. All right, bonus, bo bonus, bonus question. question on 11. This is it. This is it. 
Duff, a lot of people speak highly of your, your golf knowledge, especially with the swing. Have you thought at all about your second career once your <laughs> PJ Tour career is over? These what guys you might are psychopaths, do? man. I mean, to, like, no. <laughs> no, never. First off, there's no money in it. And second off, <laughs> dealing with tour players is a nightmare. You don't want to be part of it. That's just fact. <laughs> Ask any of the teachers. They'll tell you. So. Words to live by right there. All right. Um, <laughs> Jason, thank you so much for visiting us. And uh, best of luck this week.